ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار indeed the praise is for allah we praise and we seek his help and we seek his forgiveness we seek refuge with allah from the evils that are within ourselves and from our bad deeds Whomsoever Allah guides no one can lead this person astray and whomsoever Allah leads astray then there is no guide for him I bear witness that none has the right to be worshiped except for Allah who is alone with our partners and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the servant of Allah and the last messenger to all of mankind O oh, you who believe fear Allah with the right that he should be feared with and do not die unless you are in a state of submission in a state of al-islam O oh, mankind fear your lord who has created you from a single person and from that person created his mate and from them to scatter countless men and women throughout the earth and fear Allah from who you demand your mutual rights and do not cut off the relations with the wombs that have bore you and lead Allah as a watcher over you O oh, you who believe fear Allah and say that which is correct and upright in order that Allah may rectify for you your deeds and forgive you of your sins and whomsoever obeys Allah and his messenger has achieved a tremendous achievement as to what follows certainly the most truthful speech is the book of Allah the Quran and the best guidance is the guidance of the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam And the most evil of the affairs are the newly invented matters in the religion and every newly invented matter in the religion is innovation and every innovation in the religion is going astray and every going astray is in the hellfire Allah azza wa jalla mentions ya ayyuhal ladina amanu taqullaha wa kunu ma'as sadiqin oh you who believe fear Allah have the taqwa of Allah and be with those who are truthful wa kunu ma'as sadiqin and the truthful from this nation at the head of them the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and those who are with them from the male and the female companions these are the most truthful of this nation When we look at the lives of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his companions we see that they were individuals who were truthful in their speech truthful in their actions and most importantly truthful as it relates to their belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they kept their commitments with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they did not waver as it relates to fulfilling the commitments that they had what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Allah azza wa jal he mentions min al mu'minin rijal 
Sadaqu ma ahadullah alayhi. That from amongst the believers, there are men who were truthful as it relates to their commitment with Allah. This is how Allah Azza wa Jal described the believers of this ummah. That they were truthful. Sadaqu. They were truthful. Ma ahadullah alayhi. As it relates to their commitment with Allah. And this is very important as it relates to us in this day and time, that these are our examples. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the early generations of Muslims, these are the examples for those who come after them. So we also must be from amongst those who are truthful in our commitments with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We must be truthful in our creed, truthful in our speech, and truthful in our actions, in all of our situations. As was mentioned by the noble scholar of tafsir, Sheikh Abdurrahman ibn Nasir al-Si'di, rahimahullah ta'ala, when he explained the statement of Allah, كُونُوا مَعَ الصَّادِقِينَ قَالْ أَيْ فِي أَقْوَالِهِمْ وَأَفْعَالِهِمْ وَأَحْوَالِهِمْ الَّذِينَ أَقْوَالُهُمْ صِدْقٌ وَأَعْمَالُهُمْ وَأَحْوَالُهُمْ لَا تَكُونْ إِلَّا صِدْقًا خَالِيَةً مِنَ الْكَسَلْ وَالْفُطُورِ سَالِمَةً سَالِمَةً الْمَقَاصِدَ السَّيِّئَةِ مُشْتَمِلَةً عَلَى الْإِخْلَاصِ وَالنِّيَةِ الصَّالِحَةِ فَإِنَّ الصِّدْقَ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْبِرِّ وَإِنَّ الْبِرِّ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ شيخ عبد الرحمن بن ناصر السعدي he explained that the meaning of be with those who are truthful. He said this means in their statements and in their actions and in their different situations in life. Those whose statements are true. Those whose actions and situations of life are nothing but the truth. Free from laziness. Why that? Because al-kasal wal futur, laziness and being sluggish, this is from the signs of the munafiqeen. When it comes to worshipping Allah, they are lazy and sluggish because they really don't believe in their hearts. They are not truthful in their claim of being believers. They say with their tongues that which is not in their hearts. So their performance of the worship is that which is done lazily and sluggishly. But those who are truthful in their actions, truthful in their ibadah, truthful in their creed, these individuals do not have this sluggishness and this laziness when it comes to worshipping Allah because the true love of Allah is there in the heart. And the true uh, practice of Islam is there in their actions and in their life situations. So you don't find these individuals being lazy. He went on to mention also these individuals they are free from having evil intentions. They are free from having evil intentions. The maqasid, their goals, their aims, the things that they want in life is not evil. Rather, they are matters of good. And this entails sincerity, having a righteous intention, for indeed truthfulness, it guides to righteousness. It leads to righteousness. And righteousness, it leads to the paradise. These are the words of the great scholar of tafsir, Sheikh Abdul Rahman ibn Nasir al-Si'di, of this verse in Surah Al-Tawbah. What, is that, what does it mean to be with the truthful? Being truthful in all of your affairs. Following the example of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Not being like the hypocrites. Those who are not truthful in their affairs. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala, he stated, صدق الإنسان في العادة مستلزم لخصال البر كما أن الكذب هو مستلزم لخصال الفجور. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, the truthfulness of a person, in generally speaking, or in general, it necessitates 
the characteristics of righteousness. When a person is truthful, his truthfulness is going to bring about the characteristics of righteousness. Just as if he was a person who lies, his lying or this despicable characteristic of being one who lies, it will bring about the characteristics of corruption. And this goes back to the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِيَّاكُمْ وَعَلَيْكُمْ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالصِّدْقِ فَإِنَّ الصِّدْقِ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْبِرِّ وَإِنَّ الْبِرِّ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَالْكَذِبِ فَإِنَّ الْكَذِبِ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْفُجُورِ وَإِنَّ الْفُجُورِ يَهْدِي إِلَى النَّارِ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, upon you is being truthful. It's a command. Upon you is being truthful. Being truthful with Allah first and foremost. Being truthful with the people. Being truthful with yourselves. Upon you is being truthful in all of your affairs. For indeed, truthfulness, it leads to righteousness. It leads to righteousness. And Allah, He loves righteousness. So when you are truthful, this act of truthfulness, which is an act of good, leads to another matter of good, which is righteousness. And then righteousness leads to what? To the paradise. And then the prophet said, Beware of lying. Beware of lying. Why? Because lying leads to corruption. And corruption leads to the hellfire. And who wants to be from amongst the inhabitants of the hellfire? No Muslim in his right mind, no Muslim in her right mind wants to be from the inhabitants of the hellfire. So with that being said, it's important that we stay away from those matters that lead us to the hellfire. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا أَسْتَغْفُرُ اللَّهِ لِي وَلَكُمْ الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه يجمعين أما بعد the ulama have mentioned the statement of Allah وقون مع الصادقين it entails لا تكون مع المنافقين the statement, be with those who are truthful. It also entails, do not be from amongst the hypocrites and amongst the liars. And the hypocrites, they are liars, but not every liar is a hypocrite. Every hypocrite, every munafik is a liar, but not every liar is a munafik. But lying is one of the outward signs of hypocrisy. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, ayatul munafiq salah. The sign of the hypocrite is three matters. Ida haddatha kathaba. When he speaks, he lies. وَإِذَا وَعَدَ أَخْلَفَ And when he makes a promise, he breaks the promise. وَإِذَا تُمِنَ خَان And when he is entrusted with a matter, he proves to be treacherous. He betrays the trust. In another narration, two other characteristics are mentioned. إِذَا عَاهَدَ غَدَرْ وَإِذَا خَاصَمَ فَجَرٌ When he makes a covenant, he breaches the covenant. And when, he's, when he argues or debates, he's corrupt in his argumentation and in his debating. Five signs mentioned by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be the signs of hypocrisy. And what did Allah say about the munafiqeen? 
إن المنافقين في الدرك الأسفل من النار. Indeed, the hypocrites are in the lowest depths of the hellfire. So a part of our faith, a part of our Islam is to stay away from those things that lead to the hellfire. And stay away from the characteristics of the people of the hellfire. Well, here we have five of them. The Prophet says when he speaks, he lies. Lying is a despicable trait. The believer is not a liar. The believer is supposed to be one who is truthful in his speech, even if it is against himself. We speak the truth for the sake of Allah. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not known to be a liar. Look at the narration where Heraclius, he asked Abu Sufyan, was he accused of lying prior to claiming that he is a prophet? And he said no. And then later on, Heraclius, he mentioned and explained why he asked the question. And that is, if a man was not accused of being a liar, as it relates to the people prior to, be, prior to him claiming to be a prophet, then basically it's impossible that he's going to come now and lie on Allah and say that he's a prophet sent by Allah. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu was a truthful man prior to him being the prophet. And even in the same narration, Heraclius, he told the companions of Abu Sufyan to stand behind him. And if Abu Sufyan tells a lie, for them to declare him to be a liar. And Abu Sufyan spoke the truth. And he was a disbeliever at the time. Because he didn't want it to be known about him that he was a liar. Because lying even in the times of Jahiliyyah was a despicable characteristic to have. So, but this is the sign of the Munafiq. When he speaks, he lies. When he promises, he breaks his promise. Meaning he, he promises and he doesn't have the intention to fulfill the promise. This is from the signs of the hypocrites. And we must be very careful, especially when we promise our children things. Fulfill your promise. But remember the children, they're young. They soak in things. They remember things. 20, 30, 40 years from now, the child will remember when you as the father made a promise and you broke the promise. And don't think that this doesn't have an effect upon the child. And likewise in our relationships with one another. When we make promises to one another of good, we should fulfill the promises. This is from Islam. When he is entrusted, he breaches the trust. Someone lends you money or asks you to look after something for them, you betray the trust, you violate the trust. This is from the signs of the, hypocr the hypocrites, those who are engrossed in hypocrisy. When they make covenants, they breach the covenants, meaning they have no amana with them. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned, لا إيمان لمن لا أمانة له There is no faith for the one who does not have trust. Meaning the one who doesn't keep the trust, he's deficient in faith or he has no faith at all. Fulfilling your trust and being one who is truthful in your dealings with the people, this is from Islam. And the last thing the Prophet mentioned, وَإِذَا خَاصَمَ فَجْرٍ when he argues, he's corrupt, meaning he's abusive. Cursing at the people. This is not the way to debate and argue. As Allah mentions, وَجَادِلْهُمْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنْ And debate with, with them in a the manner that is best. There's no need to use foul language when we disagree. And another part of corruption and argumentation is when the person knows that he's wrong, but he continues to argue just to be victorious in the argumentation. The way of Islam is when whoever brings the truth, we submit to the truth. Even if it is our enemy who has spoken the truth. Khalas, if it is the truth, it's the truth. We accept the truth. Because the truth is that which is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we don't fight the truth. But those individuals who have hypocrisy in their behavior, they will continue to argue knowing they're wrong. 
just so that they can be victorious and be right. Lastly, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he mentioned. مَنْ غَشَّنَا فَلَيْسَ مِنَّا In another narration, مَنْ غَشَّ فَلَيْسَ مِنَّا Whoever deceives us is not from us. This is a major sin in Al-Islam, that you deceive your Muslim brother or sister in any shape, form or fashion. Whether it is a matter of business, whether it is a matter of marriage and divorce, all aspects and how we deal with one another should be free from deception. And likewise, we don't deceive the people in general, even if they are not Muslims. Deception is from the characteristics of the hypocrites, not from the characteristics of Al-Islam. And I mention this, Barakallah Fikum, for a purpose. Here in Mashinur Allah, we are always appreciative for what the people do for the masjid. For we do not get any government funding from anyone. The masjid, after the fadl of Allah upon us, is maintained by you all, the believers. And alhamdulillah, we always appreciate this and we make dua for you. But last week, or maybe the week before, Someone put a counterfeit bill into the sadaqah. And how I found out when I went to put the money into the master's account. I, but, uh, Ikhwan, I don't get paid for this. I, the money doesn't go in my pocket. The money goes into the master's account to take care of the bills in the masjid. Even throughout the time of the coronavirus, the pandemic, nobody was here. The masjid was still Open, would mean the bills are paid. Why? Because of the believers. After the father of Allah, you help to maintain the masjid. But somebody last week or the week before, or probably, probably prior to that, Allahu A'lam, they put a counterfeit bill into the sadaqah. We want to have good thoughts to say the person didn't know. So please be careful. When you get money from outside places, and then you want to give to the masjid. Why? Because when we give to the bank, for them to put into the account, they take the bill and then there's a form filled out. And then it makes the Muslims look bad, as if we are dealing in fraudulence. And if this was something that was done intentionally, then woe to you. As Allah as Wajal mentions, Wailu lil Woe to those who deal in fraudulence. The Muslim has no business dealing with counterfeit money. This is deception, this is fraudulence, and this is evil. And you can put your Muslim brother or sister in jeopardy. Do you want that it is said that those individuals in Masjid Nur Allah are passing around a fraudulent counterfeit bills or they're making counterfeit bills over there? You want the Masjid to have this type of image? Ikhwan, the Masjid is a symbol of Islam. And Islam is the deen of amana. Islam is the deen of sidq. Islam is the deen of adl. Islam is the, the religion of fulfilling the trust. It is the religion of truthfulness. It is the religion of justice. Muslims have no business dealing in fraudulent affairs. This is a warning and an advice to the brothers and sisters here. Stay away from that which is fraudulent. Don't put yourself in a bad situation, nor put your brother or sister in a bad situation. And don't disgrace the image of the Muslim community. Be a representative of the Muslim community. Be someone that when the people see you, it makes them interested in Al-Islam. They want to know, what is it that you're reading that makes your character like this? Why are you so noble in your behavior? What makes you to be a person who is truthful? What is it about you that's so special? Then we can direct them to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we can direct them to the words of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But if the people see us dealing in fraudulence, dealing in matters that are not praiseworthy, dealing in deception, what kind of dawah is this to the people? 
What kind of image are we displaying to the people? What kind of message are we sending to the people about Islam, about the Quran, about the way of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Ikhwan, fear Allah subhanahu wa taala, and be with those who are truthful in speech, in their actions, in their belief, and in all of their situations of life. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa taala to make us from amongst the truthful and to protect us from being from amongst those who are not truthful and from being from amongst the hypocrites. Akulu kali hava astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa subhanakallahu wa bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfirukum wa tubilik. Akumisha.